10 years of Florence on the Machine this year. I, I was thinking before this interview about the times that I have seen you over the last 10 years and I remembered in Ibiza when you played for us in Ibiza and you did, thought, you got the love. <laughs> I was remembering we, that. You I got kicked out of space. <laughs> <laughs> space. I remember like, I put a I lost drink you. on someone's head and I got kicked out of space. I remember glass on the floor. I remember you on the, <laughs> dancing on the table. <laughs> it's just like this blurry but kind of... But my shoes ended up on the cover of Mix <laughs> <laughs> Like a year later, I don't know what happened, but someone from space like was like, oh, I, I have Florence and the Machine's shoes. shoes. Amazing, I love it. <laughs> Is there moments that will are forever imprinted in your head that you will never forget? Obviously, now sitting here, I can't think of a single thing. <laughs> Another one for me was Coachella. Like, I watched that gig in Coachella. Oh. And then I remember afterwards finding out that you had broken yes, your that, foot and being like, how did I watch you do that? Like, and I didn't even know. And you carried on. Yeah, that was the first gig back as well for the, for the whole album that I broke my foot. I broke my foot on the first gig. But it was a special gig. But when we were up there, we thought it was going really badly. <laughs> Oh, wow. Because Anything in Coachella, but. you're quite far away from the audience. Yeah. So it was quite hard to get a, to connect. A, to get a sense. Yeah. But that almost added to the ferocity of the performance because I was like, yeah, you're giving... we're tanking. Yeah. This is going really bad. I better just like, yeah. I better go as hard as I can. And I was like, everyone take off something, take mm. your tops off. And and then I was like, am I going to do it? I'm doing it. You know, and I, and I suddenly realized that I was standing in my bra in front of thousands of people <laughs> I was like what am I doing I'd been jumping on and off stage like fine but this was like oh my god I better get off this stage I am standing here in a bra and yeah. everyone can see me so I just threw myself off yeah. really fast yeah. and I knew Did I'd done something Imme immediately I was like that does not feel good. And then I had to keep finish the song. And it's a really fast song, so I did a whole lap of the You were flying crowd, from like, one to the other. Broken foot, just like running around. And then I went off the stage the wrong way. And um, and I think a security guard found me behind a speaker stack, like crying with my top in my hand, being like, I've I've done something. And yeah, then we found out I'd broken my foot and I was I was so devastated. And we had to do the whole campaign, the first beginning, like yeah. all the SNLs, like all the gigs. Radio One's Big Weekend, I Radio remember. Radio One's Big Weekend. I, but it was kind of um, weirdly grounding, you know, yeah. I, it, and it also meant, meant I had to sit and perform the songs in a different way. And, and, and it was a good lesson, I think. Yeah, I remember seeing a list of ten commandments that you wrote in your studio wall. Oh my wall. god, the Florence commandments. The Florence commandments. Weirdly, one of them was appreciate your feet. Yeah, which that's is what I was really going to say. Because I then broke my foot. Because yeah, I really I, hurt my foot when I was a teenager. Did as you? Well. Yeah, I hurt I it really badly. I had like a really hurt foot for about six months when I was a teenager, and I just didn't tell anybody. Like I wouldn't let people know I was in pain. And I yeah. think if you have that kind of Disposition. I think hunger is kind of about that. It is the way that you. It's kind of a song about the ways that you almost try to show that you're in pain without being able to say that you're in pain. Yeah. Eventually, I think someone grabbed me. and was like, "You've been limp. You're like limping. What's yeah. what's wrong?" So that appreciate your feet was one of the commandments from then. And then I think it was the same foot that I broke. So I don't know what's wrong with that side of <laughs> my body. <laughs> It was a time in my life when I was just hiding a lot of stuff, mm. you know, and, and trying to find ways to manage the internal discomfort I felt. So actually being in actual physical pain was sort of like, well, that kind of makes sense because I'm in a lot of emotional pain. Yeah. So maybe it makes sense to be in physical pain. So I think the hunger kind of poses that question, you know, what is it that you're mm. looking for? And maybe there there is no answer to that but in expressing it to each other there's a, some kind of healing that takes place mm -hmm. you know that you're Definitely. like I don't know I'm not sure there's ever an answer but there's something in in collectively singing something or being together in something in a, yeah, yeah that kind of releases it yeah yeah what would you say to your 17 year old self now 
just <laughs> put that drink drink down. <laughs> eat a sandwich. <laughs> you know, like, Get yeah, like tell someone about this. Or what would I say? I don't know. Like I kind of want to give myself a hug, which is is probably the right place to be in because mm. I think I think a lot of the stuff is about how hard you can be on yourself mm. as well. You know, I was so self-loathing and so like. I was so hard on myself yeah. when I was a kid and so desperate to be the right thing, you know, like to, to be perfect or to get it right. And I'd kind of want to like give myself a hug and be like, you don't have to try so hard. It's going to be OK. Yeah. Or like being you is OK. You know, like you as you are is fine. You don't have to like strive to be perfect or to be special or to be like to get love you know like just to be yourself is okay and but also to understand that like I can't be angry with that girl you know mm. she just probably needs a hug <laughs> mm. yeah I read about something that your mom said to you that gave you great relief about being normal what did she say she said you're normal you just have some stuff going on in your life <laughs> Which is such a mum thing to say, and well, I loved like, it so much. She was like, you're not crazy, you just have a weird life. Like, you're pretty yeah. normal, you just yeah. do a weird thing. Yeah. Although perhaps I, could, I live a creative life, I do actually crave normality and domesticity a lot. Like, it's really important to me to cook for myself and to take care of myself and to have space to read and to write mm. and to just... I watch a lot of TV. <laughs> For me, like normality and 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 almost structure is really precious, mm. and I I try to find ways to protect that within mm. the whirlwind of it. Mm. No choirs. The last song mm. on the album. I love it. I love the sentiment of it and everything. Just the idea that happiness doesn't have to be loud and rowdy. It can be quiet. Yeah, I think that's what. And I... a bit boring. <laughs> Boring rock stars. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, oh. <laughs> it's like, I was like, oh, it's 10 o'clock. I better get to bed. <laughs> um, the last couple of years, again, have, has definitely been figuring out that it wasn't really the... Because the enormous gigs and and that is incredible and, and that is what I dreamed of as a kid. But when I was doing that, there wasn't really any peace in between, you know, like there was super highs and super lows and there was no middle bit, you know, which is how I lived for a long time. And I thought that was just kind of who I was. I was like, oh, no, I just am extreme. There's never going to be a middle way. But I kind of found it through again boring rock star like self care and yeah. meditation and dealing with my shit <laughs> acknowledging my issues and trying to work on them in a loving way <laughs> and I actually and facing stuff and letting go you know yeah. letting go of a lot of more controlling aspects mm. of who I am and it but it is in the letting go of control that you find you were more comfortable in yourself. Mm. You know, that's what... The last couple of years have been a lot of, like, letting go. And happiness wasn't the enormous... It. I mean, it is... The happiness you get from doing, like, Glastonbury, I don't even know if you can call it happiness. It's yeah. just like being on drugs. Like, yeah. you're like, this is coming down at some point. You know, yeah. like, it's so high. It's terrifyingly high, I can yeah, imagine. Yeah, it's... Yeah. And from a gig as well, but kind of the moments of just sitting on a sofa with someone that you really care about yeah. watching TV and, like... This is kind of it, and and that really is what what life is. You know, life mm. isn't the huge things. It's all the little stuff in between. And if you can learn to live presently, to appreciate all the little stuff, then I think it's become quite important for me to have a life in between the the big stuff. And I started to really treasure that. And the more that you take care of yourself, and and also that you you learn to take care of others and to like look outside yourself the more you come to appreciate like the little things mm. which I've found great happiness in in mm. the last couple of years Lawrence thank you so much <laughs> thank you <laughs>